Hi, this is Terry Cuti, founder and director of Deep Sea Foundation. I'd like to welcome you to the educational channel where we discuss all topics related to breast reconstruction and breast surgery for those affected by breast cancer. I'm joined this morning by my guest, Dr. Richard Klein, who is a board certified and trained microsurgeon who performs breast reconstruction, including a variety of autologous reconstruction that's using your own tissue. And sometimes it is called flap breast reconstruction. And he is in the great state of South Carolina at the Center for Natural Breast Reconstruction in Mount Pleasant. Dr. Klein, welcome to the program this morning. Thanks, pleasure to be here. Yeah, we have a very interesting topic this morning. It is an alternate flap that can be used instead of deep flap, which is using your tummy tissue. This morning, we're going to talk about an S gap. You tell them what those letters stand for, S G A P, and I'm going to let you begin the discussion and give us all the information this morning. Sure, Terry, thanks. Mm -hmm. So the S gap was invented by uh, Dr. Allen, who also invented the DIEP, mm -hmm. roughly the same time. Um, I remember in 1993, he presented the S gap at a meeting. And I think that was the first time it was formally presented uh, in, in the public. And it was hailed at the time as being a really significant advance over the gluteal musculocutaneous flap that was developed by Bill Shaw, who trained Dr. Allen. Mm -hmm. The gluteal musculocutaneous flap was almost impossible for anyone to do. Dr. Shaw had a series of several hundred cases and probably no one else ever came close. The S gap flap by Dr. Allen made the process not easy, but not quite as hard as a musculocutaneous because you gained additional pedicle length, blood vessel length by extracting it from the muscle, just like we do from extracting the muscle from the rectus of the DIEP flap. Mm -hmm. So it went from being an absurdly difficult operation to merely a very difficult operation. And let me show you where the tissue comes from. And this is okay. an atlas. Um, and here is representative of where we would draw. This is uh, where we would take the skin island and we bevel out on either side to capture as much tissue as we need. And when all is said and done, you can take an hourglass, I mean a pear-shaped individual and turn them into an hourglass individual. And while the buttock often has some deformity initially with a line on each side, when we revise it, we come as close as we can to creating the same situation you'd have if you'd had a pure cosmetic buttock lift. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're talking about. Yeah, the eye, the eye of the plastic surgeon. <laughs> right. The artistic eye. So um, why would you want a gap flap? Mm -hmm. And the primary reason is if you don't have any or an adequate DIEP flap donor site. The most common reason for not having any DIEP flap donor site is if you've had a tummy tuck. But there's plenty of people who have, but you know, theoretically a DIEP donor site, but it won't produce the tissue that we need. Now, one way to get around that is to go ahead and do a DIEP flap. And then we have learned with subsequent fat grafting, it's very realistic to assume that you can often double the size of the flap through subsequent operations, doing liposuction and saving the fat and fat grafting. But sometimes for various reasons, the reasons being you might not want a scar in front of the abdomen if there's not that much wrong with the abdomen anyway, or if the patient has a large butt that she would like to have more shapely, sometimes we'll conclude it's worth doing a gap flap. And the gap actually makes a beautiful breast I'm gonna say in many situations, it makes a nicer breast than a DIEP. And the reason for that is you can think of the fat in a DIEP flap as kind of being like a custard or pudding. It's kind of floppy, it hangs. It has no structure, not much structure to it. The fat in a gap flap is like jello. 
you can put it, it's like jello put in a mold and you take the mold off and it holds its form. And that's because the buttocks are actually made to take pressure from sitting. So there's lots of fibrous septae, little connections running from the, the muscle to the skin. And that to a large extent lets it hold its shape. So we can sculpt the buttocks when we do a gap flap and many times have a very youthful looking breast. And we have done if not quite 300, almost 300 gap flaps. Uh, most of those simultaneous bilateral. It's very, very, very rare to find a practice that does simultaneous bilateral gap flaps routinely with a high success rate. In fact, I only know of two and we're one of them. Um, the gap- Dr. can I ask you why? Is it, is it because of the positioning on the table? No, it's just, um, the anatomy of the gap pedicle makes it extraordinarily difficult. And I'll go into some technical details since you've asked. For one thing, you're almost operating in a cone. And the struggle, the real struggle is after you get below the gluteal muscle, there's a bed of fat. And at this point, the gluteal artery is still usually minuscule and it's not a good match for the internal mammary artery that we used. And it's an unusual situation where the arteries correct, connect at right angles. It's like a bunch of pipes. And unfortunately, the caliber of the pipe when you come to a junction is absolutely worthless in determining which one you should divide. So we actually call that area the Medusa's head. And we have to remove all the fat from those blood vessels so we can see the entire picture prior to deciding which vessels to cut so that we ultimately get to the, the largest artery that we can. Meanwhile, the gluteal veins get enormous very quickly. So you're working around very big veins and tiny arteries all clustered together and you're working down into a cone the further you get. So um, I have friends who have done many, many hundreds of DIEP flaps who decide to try gap flaps. And I tell them, this is how we do it. And they called me back and said, we must be doing something wrong. This is so hard. And I said, no, it's just a hard flap. Mm -hmm. But we keep doing it because it makes a beautiful breast. Mm -hmm. the, um, the success rate is not quite as high in our hands as DIEP. Our DIEP flap survival rate is 99%. Our gap survival rate is only a little over 95%. So we lose about one in 20, but it makes a wonderful breast. So that's why we keep doing it. If you could flip a coin and uh, if you've got equal DIEP flap and gap, we always say, let's use the DIEP. But if you don't have a DIEP, a lot of times the gap will make a wonderful breast. And that's what we use. That's clearly our second in line go-to flap. Well, I, I, I do think it's important for patients to know there are options because I've had patients talk to me and say, but I've, I know I'm not a candidate for deep flap. And so when you think about the squishiness, you know, in, in the, and I guess a combination of squishiness and firmness in the buttock um, area and tissue, it makes complete sense, but I could see with your explanation, how, you know, in, in microsurgery and breast reconstruction, it's all about getting the right perforators, which are those blood vessels and, and getting that anastomosis, right? So you gave a great explanation on that. What about, uh, what about scar placement? Well, um, I'll go back to this. Um, the gap donor site revision, which we typically do at three months is a big revision but it can end up very nice. Um, if, you're, if your butt is perfect in the beginning, it's not going to make it any better. And I frankly counsel people, um, you know, you could end up looking like you have a 16 year old boy's butt. That's just the way it is. Yeah. If you've got a large butt, it can be wonderful for it. Mm -hmm. So it's not, it's, it's not like you choose to have a gap flap or not have it. It's almost like your body chooses for you a lot of times what's going to be your your donor site. Another thing about the gap, why it's so hard to find people who do it, or at least do simultaneous bilaterals is you need to get the, the internal mammary blood vessels in the chest prepared first. So that right. takes about an hour, then you need to close the wound, 
flip the patient, reprep and drape the butt, and then to do a simultaneous bilateral reconstruction, you need a surgeon dissecting each buttock simultaneously. There's very few surgeons who are comfortable dissecting gaps at all. The chance of having two in one practice, it just doesn't occur in many places. And it still routinely takes three hours as a fast dissection. Five is not unheard of. So it takes that long to dissect the two flaps. Then you take the flaps, put them on the sterile operating instrument table, close the bud as quickly as you can, put a dressing on it, flip the patient, reprep and drape. Now we take those flaps off the table. And fortunately, it's usually just like installing car parts and everything goes very well. But it's, um, it's the most repeatable thing we do that's really stressful is having two flaps sitting there getting ischemic while we close the butt, flip the patient, reprep and drape. Now, if it didn't work out well, 95% of the time, we wouldn't keep doing it. Usually it works out very well, but there's good reasons why it's hard to find people who do this operation routinely. Yeah, you have worked together as a team to perfect it. I can see that. And you answered so many of my questions. So, so inframam or, uh, the uh, mammary arteries prepped first, close that, flip the patient, work on the uh, S-gap area, and then close that, turn the patient back over and place the flaps into the breast mount. That, that was a great visual that you gave. So, yeah. Thanks. Um, what about the recovery real quick before we wrap up? Well, it's very different from a DIEP, but I don't think the recovery time's any different. DIEP, we say six to eight weeks. Um, gap is, I'm going to call it similar. Obviously, there's no danger of abdominal wall problems with a gap. There are dangers of, you can have a blood clot with a gap just like you can with a DIEP flap. Um, the S gap is a little less problematic for the donor than the eye gap was because you were literally sitting on your scar with the eye gap with the s gap it's it's higher and yeah. um, if you are thinking about having this operation um thankfully we have many wonderful wonderful patients that have been through this and many of them are more than willing to speak with um patients who are thinking about having the surgery and telling them how they navigated this and navigated that and they can tell you things we can't because we've never had the operation. So that resource is very, very important too if you're considering something like this. That is great information. And I'm going to place on the, uh, uh, at the end of the video here, the information where they can reach out to you. You guys have a wonderful website. And so I'm sure they can, if they have questions about this or want to get in touch with the patient, they can do that. Dr. Klein, this was really uh, fascinating information about the S-gap, superior gluteal, gluteal artery perforator flap. And right. I really, really appreciate you giving us this information this morning and adding this to our educational uh, video channel. So thanks a lot for joining us today. Thank you. All right. Take care.